Hello students, once again welcome to our YouTube channel kvs.technofun. This channel is basically designed to provide you contents on ICT, Information and Communication Technology. In the previous session, we have discussed about syllabus and split up for class 7 and later in chapter 1, we have discussed about the code decode so that you can do some mental exercise for your mind and you can develop your reasoning ability. Hope you have enjoyed that session. In today's session, we will learn about coding. So here we go. This is the concept of coding, chapter 2, concept of coding. So one by one, we will understand the concept. At the end of the chapter, you will be able to understand the concept of coding, flowchart, algorithm, algorithm, recognize symbols, you can draw flowcharts and you can write algorithm. So these are the objective which we will be able to achieve after this chapter. Coding. What is coding? Coding is basically the process of writing instructions in a programming language. Actually, whenever we want to uh, want to do certain work, we need to program it. Whatever you want to do, either you want to play games, you want to develop software, you want to create websites, or you, you want to solve your daily routine problems. If you want these things to be done by computer, then you have to write certain program. And these programs are written in some programming languages. To understand these programming languages, we go through it, we learn the programming language and do the coding so that computer can understand that languages and perform the activities which we want. So some of the basic programming language which are usually used in nowadays are Python, Visual Basic, C Sharp, .NET, Java as well as Ruby. There are more, more number of programming languages available but these are few popular programming languages. In this chapter, we will learn about Python programming language. So coding basically is to writing instructions means how to do a certain task but only difference is instead of writing these instructions in our own language we will write these instructions in a particular programming language and to write these instructions in a particular programming language First of all, we have to learn a programming language. Is it clear? Now we will move forward. Suppose, now understand the concept of coding through an example. Like if you want to celebrate the birthday of your friend or your own birthday, what will you do? You will plan it. You will write certain steps in, uh, and you will mention a these steps on a paper and what you need to do to celebrate your birthday. There are so many tasks associated for the celebration of your birthday. You need to prepare an invitation whom you want to call for the party or you have to order a cake. You need to decorate the place where you will celebrate your birthday and then the alignment of the snacks and sweets for your friends and relatives. What happens if you change the order of these instructions? Suppose you order cake first and then you arrange sweets and then you decorate the party place and after that you invite your friends. What will happen? There may be the chances that some of friends, some of your friends may reach to the destination and some may not because of the 
quick invitation or the delayed invitation you can call when invitation uh, maybe some people are engaged in other assignment or maybe they are some distant places and they could not reach on time to your destination so it will create a problem and it and your birthday will not be that much joyful as, as it should be. So to celebrate your birthday in a very joyful manner and to invite everyone in your party and to enjoy with your friends, you need to plan your birthday properly and you have to give timely invitation to your friends and relatives and other things you have to do in a well planned manner then only you will be able to celebrate your birthday so coding is also the similar thing means whatever you want to do you need to write all those steps in a sequential manner in an order and these order must be followed okay next is tools for problem solving so whenever we we want to celebrate a birthday or any other activity or you want to do anything suppose you want to do outing with your parents or the family members you need to plan you need to write everything whatever you want to take away to the party place what will be the fooding arrangement how you will how will you uh, reach there what, what are the games you will play over there? So, several things you have to thought of. Problem solving means planning. Problem solving means planning. Once you need to do the certain problem, solution of a certain problem, you need to plan it well. To draw a layout of solution of a problems before converting into computer-based program, we need to plan it. Okay. And whenever we do planning, there are certain tools to do that planning. How will you do that? In, in layman language, if you say, I want to do planning, what will you do? You will write on a paper, everything you will write on a paper, so that everybody can understand what you, you want. In the similar way, whenever we do a program for computers, we need certain kind of tools in which we can draw, write, explain. Okay, so here are two tools we will discuss. One is the algorithm, another one is the flowchart. Algorithm means to write step by step instructions to do a certain task, whereas flowchart is like this. It's a pictorial representation. Later we will discuss it in more details in the next slide. What is algorithm? Algorithm is a method or means you can say to do a planning, perform a particular task. Algorithm is process of writing all the steps required to solve a particular problem. Basically, Algorithms are written in English-like structure. Okay, so these are the English-like English language structure, and you write everything one by one, every step one by one, and note it down. To develop an algorithm, following steps are required. First of all, you need to understand the problem and write down the problem definition. After that. Analyze what are the inputs, what, are, what is output and what is process. You know what is input? Input means whatever is received from the user. And process is the actions you need to take on that input to convert it into output. Okay, now developing an algorithm after that and then after developing an algorithm, you can refine it by adding more details. 
you cannot develop a project or program in one go. You need to refine it again and again by adding some more details. And after that, reviewing it with the third party or yourself so that you can identify what are the various bugs or errors in your program. This is an algorithm example. We will go through it. Let un let's understand what algorithm do we use in our daily life. For example, I want to prepare a grilled sandwich. How will you do that? First of all, you need certain items to prepare a grilled sandwich. Bread, mayonnaise, chopped vegetables, as well as butter. These things are required to prepare a grilled sandwich. And once these things are available to you, you will process these things, means prepare filling for filling and then spread butter on the bread. Put the raw sandwich in the griller. Once you have made the raw grilled sandwich, then you will put it in the griller and after a few minutes, you will get ready grilled sandwich. So here three things are important. One is the input, another one is process and third one is output that you can see here. Input process, output. This is also known as IPO. Okay. Next is flowchart. We are stopping here because this is a new chapter portion. We will later discuss it. Thank you.